Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel and once again welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator Flight School. In today's video we'll be discussing the traffic pattern or circuit. We'll first briefly discuss the pattern itself and then we'll carry out a flight doing a couple of touch and goes and then a full stop landing. As always I do hope you enjoy the video, if you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, please leave them down in the comments section below. But now let's jump into the cockpit and begin the lesson. So what we're looking at here is a diagram of the standard traffic pattern. It might all seem a bit alien to those of you who are new to aviation. So we'll briefly discuss the traffic pattern now before we begin the lesson. That way you'll have a little bit more familiarity with what we're talking about. So typically a traffic pattern is flown in a left-hand circuit, however it very much depends on uh, the aerodrome as to whether it's a left or right-hand circuit. And in fact today at Bears we'll be flying a right-hand traffic pattern due to the high terrain out to the south. However we'll uh, brief according to the diagram that we have in front of us, as the whole process is almost identical just in mirror image. So assuming that the runway we have in front of us is a uh, runway from west to east. Today we'll be departing from the threshold out towards the east. As usual we'll take off and we'll climb at uh, 70 knots straight ahead on runway heading. This part of the circuit is known as the departure leg or the upwind leg. We'll climb at 70 knots until we reach 500 feet above aerodrome elevation and then we'll make a left turn at around 15 degrees angle of bank onto the crosswind leg. The crosswind leg is 90 degrees off from the departure leg, so today for example that would be on heading of 360 and we'll continue climbing at 70 knots on the crosswind leg until the aircraft's tail is just in line with the runway centre line. At that point it will be time to turn onto the downwind leg, so once again making a turn 90 degrees to the left onto a heading of 270. Roughly during the uh, time it takes us to turn onto downwind, the aircraft should be reaching about 1,000 feet above aerodrome elevation. At that point we'll level off the aircraft, trim for uh, level flight, allow the speed to accelerate up to 90 knots and then reducing the power to maintain 90 knots on the downwind leg. Once we are on downwind we'll carry out our uh, before landing checklist, we'll talk about that more during the flight and then we'll call downwind on uh, frequency to let any other traffic in the area know that we're on downwind in the circuit. We'll continue on downwind all the way down until uh, just before we turn onto base. How do we know when to turn onto base? Well we'll keep a look out the window and when the uh, runway threshold is roughly 45 degrees from our present position we'll begin a turn onto base. Again it's a left hand 90 degree turn so in this case onto heading of 180. And as we turn onto base we'll reduce the power, allow the airspeed to come back. Once we're below the uh, flap extension speed we'll take a stage of flap and then we'll trim and use power accordingly to maintain a speed of around uh, 70 knots and a descent rate of around 400 feet per minute. We'll continue on the base leg until we decide it's time to turn final, at which point again we'll turn left 90 degrees onto final for in this case runway 26 at base. Once we're on final we'll carry out a couple more checks and then we'll continue down the approach towards the uh, threshold for runway 26. That just gives you a brief idea of the traffic pattern and the name of each leg in the circuit. We'll discuss more as I say during the lesson. If you think you'll struggle to remember the names of each of the individual legs I recommend perhaps taking some notes now. Anyway let's jump into the cockpit and begin the flight. So once again we're in the cockpit of the Cessna 172 and we're at the holding point for runway 26 at Bears. Obviously we've already discussed the uh, traffic pattern and the various steps that we're looking to carry out throughout the procedure. However we'll now uh, fly the procedure and discuss as we go along. So we're all ready to go. The first thing we'll do is call traffic and announce that we are remaining in the pattern. That means we will be uh, staying in the circuit and carrying out touch and goes. 7 Mike 3, traffic Cessna Golf, India Tango Bravo Sierra taking off runway 26 right touch and go. So strobe and landing lights on, part brake off, checking that it's clear on final and as well as the departure end.
As we discussed in the briefing, it'll be uh, slightly unusually, it'll be a right hand traffic pattern that we're flying today. So, lining up with the runway, and let's go! Smoothly increasing the throttle to full power. There's full power, RPM looks good, temperature and pressure's in the green. 55 knots, coming back on the stick. Tapping the brakes. And pitching for a climb of around 70 knots. Once again, trimming out the uh, control forces. At 500 feet, we'll begin our right turn, so we'll be looking for an altitude of uh, 1,200 feet. And maintaining uh, around uh, 10 to 15 degrees angle of bank for the initial turn onto crosswind. So there's 1200 feet starting our turn onto crosswind. Always keeping a good visual lookout, particularly in the circuit, to make sure there's no other traffic. And looking for a heading of uh, 350 degrees for crosswind. So we're now on the crosswind leg. As soon as the aircraft's tail passes the uh, runway centre line, we can start turning onto downwind. There's 1,000 feet above aerodrome elevation, so we can pitch down for level flight now. As the speed increases, we can uh, increase our angle of bank. And we'll start trimming for level flight. Heading of 080 for the downwind leg. And 90 knots, so we can start coming back on the power. So we're now good on the heading and we're trimmed for straight and level. For the downwind leg, to judge the uh, distance from the runway, you want the runway to be roughly below the aircraft's wingtip, so that's looking okay at the moment. Carry out our pre-landing checks, so the brakes are off and checked, undercarriage is down, mixture is rich, fuel is sufficient, instruments are checked, landing light is on and hatches and harness are secure. Continuing on the downwind, we'll call downwind. Seven Mike Tree, traffic Cessna Golf, India Tango Bravo Sierra is on downwind runway 26. That lets the other traffic know our position in the circuit. And as soon as the runway threshold is around 45 degrees from our aircraft, we'll start the turn onto base. So there's around 45 degrees now, we'll start turning onto base. As soon as we do that, we'll come back on the aircraft power. Maintaining straight level, allowing the aircraft speed to come back. Trimming as necessary. The speeds within the white arc on the airspeed indicator will take one stage of flap. Car peak can go on. And pitching for 70 knots. Keeping an eye on the runway and checking on the uh, arrival end that there's no traffic on final. Start turning on to final now. Once again, using pitch to control the uh, speed and power to control the descent rate. Take another stage of flap. 70 knots down uh, the approach and then uh, 60 knots over the threshold. And final flap. Call final. Seven Mike Tree, traffic Cessna Golf, India Tango Bravo Sierra is on final runway 26 touch and go right traffic. And pitches fall fine, undercarriage is down, flaps are set, and clearance is not required, runway is clear, car peak can go away.
Once again, maintaining that uh, touchdown zone and the same point on the windshield. As soon as we touch down, we'll go full power again for the go around and we'll bring the flaps up to uh, 20. So, over the threshold, reducing the power, looking to the other end of the runway, holding back on the stick. Let's touch down, full power, flaps 20. And the aircraft almost lifting itself off the ground there with the uh, trim that we had set. So climbing away, allowing the speed to increase. You'll find that the climb performance with flaps 20 is significantly less good than with flap 0. Now we're above 300 feet now, we can start retracting the flaps. The aircraft accelerating a little bit better now, we'll pitch for 70 knots. And there's 500 feet above aerodrome elevation, so we'll start another turn onto crosswind. Once again looking for a heading of 350. As you become more familiar with a particular aerodrome you'll start noticing uh, features in the landscape that you can just line up with to uh, carry out your crosswind or base leg or downwind, whichever it might be. Okay, the tail's aligned with the runway, we'll start turning on to downwind now. It's 1,000 feet, so pitching down. And rolling out onto downwind. Coming back on the power. So for example on the downwind now I can see quite a nice feature to line up with for the downwind leg is this tip of the lake just over here rather than using the actual heading all the time. So brakes are often checked, undercarriage is down, mixture is rich, fuel is sufficient, landing light is on, instruments are checked and the hatches and harness is secure. We'll call downwind again. Seven Mike Tree traffic Cessna Golf. India Tango Bravo Sierra is on downwind runway 26. And keeping an eye on that runway threshold for the uh, 45 degree angle where we start our base turn. So there's 45 degrees, coming back on the power, starting our turn onto base, allowing the aircraft's airspeed to reduce. In the white arc, one stage of flap, trimming for 70 knots. Having a look on final, making sure there's no other traffic. And starting a turn on to final. Take uh, 20 degrees now on the flaps. And we'll call final. 7 Mike 
Factory, traffic Cessna Golf, India Tango Bravo Sierra is on final runway 26 touch and go right traffic. Full flaps. Copy away, pitch full fine, undercarriage down, flaps are set, and clearance not required, and the runway is clear. We'll do one more touch and go, and then we'll make another final right hand circuit for a landing. So over the threshold, coming back on the power, flaring the aircraft, holding it off, touch down, slowly increase to full power, flaps 20, it's 55 knots, coming back on the stick, and we're up once again, tapping the brakes, climbing away. At 300 feet, we'll uh, start bringing the flaps up. So the flaps are up, pitching for 70 knots, and continuing the climb up to uh, 500 feet. There's 500 feet, turning onto crosswind. Turning on to downwind, it's 1,000 feet, levelling off. Once again, just visually pointing at the tip of that lake that I mentioned earlier. There's 90 knots coming back on the power. And this time we want to inform traffic that we'll be making a full stop landing. So brakes are often checked, undercarriage is down, mixture is rich, fuel is sufficient, landing light is on, instruments are checked, and hatches and harness are secure. Cool downwind. Seven Mike Three traffic Cessna Golf, India Tango Bravo Sierra is on downwind runway two six. Again, keeping an eye on the touchdown zone. And of course this time when we land we won't need to retract the flaps and we'll uh, start braking to come off at whichever exit's closest to us. So it's 45 degrees, turning onto base once again, coming back on the power. Carpet on. 
10 degrees of flap, pitching for 70 knots. There's our base leg, checking it's clear on final. And turning on to final. Twenty degrees of flap. And full flap. Car peak can go off. Pitch full fine, undercarriage is down, flaps are set, call final. Seven Mike Tree, traffic Cessna Golf, India Tango Bravo Sierra is on final runway 26 to land. Landing clearance not required and the runway is clear. Over the threshold, cutting the power. And touch down. Again, we're not going to make that taxiway exit, so we'll continue down to the uh, second exit. Idle power and slowly braking to come off at the next exit. Once again we're only clear of the runway once we pass the holding point. So we'll get clear of the holding point. Bring the aircraft to a stop, part brake on, Throttle up to 1000 RPM and we'll announce that we're clear of the runway. 7 Mike Tree, traffic Cessna Golf, India Tango Bravo Sierra is clear of the runway. And by announcing clear of the runway, any other traffic uh, looking to land at best will know that the runway is now vacant. So there you go, that was a uh, couple of circuits in the uh, 152. As I mentioned, it's, it's somewhat more typical to fly a left hand circuit at most airfields. However, with the uh, high terrain at best, a right-hand circuit made much more sense. And it really does depend from uh, one airfield to another. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you now have a better idea of how to fly the traffic pattern, specifically in the Cessna 152. Don't be alarmed if initially everything feels quite uh, busy and hectic when trying to fly the pattern yourself. It's quite normal. It's just a case of practicing all the procedures until uh, they become second nature. Anyway, once again, I do hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, thanks very much and I'll see you all again soon.